The International Rugby World Cup has just ended in Japan. It was watched by millions around the world. I was one of them. I love it. 100,000 people packed into a stadium, excited. Now imagine that same number, 100,000. 100,000 people every day for 365 days. Get that total, hold it in your head, multiply it by five. That brings you to almost 200 million. That's the number of people in Africa every year that will suffer from malaria. It's staggering. These people line up in clinics every day, waiting to be seen by doctors who are increasingly stressed out and exhausted. For patients, work days are lost, and precious income is also gone. For children, school days are missed, and education is repeatedly compromised. People get malaria over and over again. Half a million children will be unlucky and die from malaria. Others will have the infection affect them for the rest of their life with disability. This wall of malaria must fall. But how does malaria actually kill you? What, what does it do to your body? Well, the parasites invade a red cell. A single malaria parasite in a red cell will give birth to many daughters, and those daughters will invade other red cells. One parasite can give birth to 30, New parasites invade new red cells, and it grows exponentially. The red cells burst, you have red blood cell loss and anemia. At the same time, the red cells secrete, uh, the parasite puts proteins on the surface of the red cell that make the red cells sticky, and other red cells stick to them. When these stick to the lining of a red blood vessel, then they clog the vessel. If that happens to be in your brain, then you know what happens. It's coma, and it can kill you. So I've been studying malaria in communities in Africa for some years now. And what you find in these communities is that the adults are well, but the children get sick and can die from malaria. And if those adults were sitting in a room like you are now, and we tested a fraction of them, we would see that they had malaria parasites in their circulation, and yet they're walking around, going about their daily business completely okay. Did you know that you could take antibody from those adults and use it to treat patients with malaria? Just imagine now that you went on safari to my country, Kenya, and you came back to Kenya, to, to Germany, having had a wonderful time, and then you got sick, fever, chills, and you come to me in the clinic, and I look at you and I say, ah, yeah, yeah, that is malaria. And then, instead of treating you, I say, look, we've got two options. I could give you antibody from people in Africa, that would get rid of your infection, or I could give you artemisinin tablets, fast-acting, and that will also get rid of your infection. Which would you choose? <laughs> you don't have to answer. The experiment was done over 50 years ago, and they showed that you could take antibody from people who are resistant to malaria, and you can use it to treat people with malaria. And so what my lab has been trying to do is to understand how do these antibodies actually work, and which are the exact antibodies that get rid of the parasite. And so you can do these experiments in mice, you can do them in monkeys, but ethically it's unpalatable, and it's not really the same as a human malaria infection. 
And so we decided to take the bold step and actually study the course of infection in live human beings. Yes, we decided to deliberately infect humans with malaria so that we could study the course of the infection. Before we began, we had an extensive consultation process to make sure that it was acceptable, that we'd considered all the ethical issues, and that safety was paramount. And then we collaborated with colleagues from the US, from Scenaria, to get an FDA-approved parasite that we could use for our experiments. And so in that clip there, you can see that when a mosquito bites you, it finds a blood vessel, that it takes up blood, and at the same time, it shares with you its lovely malaria parasites. Um, and what we did was pretty similar. We didn't use mosquitoes. We gave intravenous injection directly into the arm. And so this is the course of the experiment, that on the first day, we, we give you the injection, and then we wait for seven days. We know that it's going to go to the liver, and then it's going to emerge in your blood, and then we're there on standby to monitor, see what's happening to the parasites, and make sure that the patient, the volunteer, is safe. But before we did that, we did something clever before we started our study. Remember, I told you that you can take antibody from one person and use it to treat another? Well, since we did this experiment in Kenya, we recruited volunteers who had varying levels of antibody. So in that graph, you can see what we call malaria naive. So most of you here who've never had malaria, if I measured your antibodies, that's the level I would get. Pretty low level of antibody. If you've lived in Africa and you've had malaria many times, on the other hand, you've got high levels of antibody. And so when we recruited our volunteers, we included Kenyans who had low levels of antibody, so immunologically with respect to malaria, they looked just like you. We recruited some that had high levels of antibody, and then we recruited people that were in between. And then we proceeded to do our malaria challenge experiments. And the results were really astounding. So the first result, this is what happens when you've never seen malaria before, you've never had an infection. The parasite grows and grows and grows exponentially. And if I don't treat you, things could be pretty bad. And this is what's been seen in Europe, um, in America, in other places where people have done this study. So the parasites grow. When they reach a certain level, we treat, and that's the end of the infection. But the really exciting stuff starts now in people who had antibody. We see first in the yellow line at the bottom that the parasites did not grow. Um, so just imagine, I've given you IV, an injection, an infection dose that would make you sick. And what happens? Absolutely nothing. The parasites didn't show up. And then we had the people in green, where the parasites did show up, as we expected on day six. They grew a little bit, and then they disappeared. The, the volunteers remained completely well. They were playing football, watching video games, all the entertainment that we had set up for them while the experiment was going on. The third group were parasites showed up, as expected, but instead of growing exponentially up, up and up, the parasites just stayed at a low level. And it was really curious. Why are you able to stop the parasite from growing and yet you don't get rid of it completely? The parasite was still there. And so, for me, this is um, the most exciting results, that in a very elegant experiment, we've been able to show that immunity is possible and that it is mediated by antibodies in our time. And I think for my career, this is really one of the most exciting results. And so what are we doing now? 
Here is our parasite. We're trying to understand where the antibodies bind on this parasite. But not only that, we want to know what's the killing mechanism. When malaria is in your body, what happens so that the parasites are killed? And how do antibodies mediate that? So we've been looking at a range of functional assays. For example, phagocytosis. What you can see there is a white cell. When you've got antibody in your system, the antibody can talk to the white cells and to other immune cells to say, hey, there's someone in here who should not be here. And in the case of phagocytosis, they literally eat up the merozoid. We've also been trying to look at what exactly do the antibodies bind to. And here you see a microarray that we've designed. And each of those dots is a malaria parasite protein. And it literally lights up every time the correct antibody binds to it. And so we're looking on the side, at, the, as the, at the antibody as the mediator. On one side, binding to a relevant part of the parasite. On the other side, engaging with an immune cell. And that's resulting in destruction of the parasite. And the next steps for us now are to finally map individual antibodies, monoclonal antibodies, map their cognate partners on the parasite side, and we believe that this is now going to lead us to new vaccines and therapeutics for malaria. This is why I'm so excited that the wall of malaria is the next to fall. Thank you.